What, what's your name now? Is Robert Boyd. Robert Boyd or Bob Boyd. And you were born in Bermona, you say? Uh, outside of Bermona, yeah. I was born on a farm. I had a midwife to deliver me. Oh, uh, okay. You were born in Bermona, what state? Missouri. Missouri. Bermona, Missouri. Yeah, in the foothills of Ozark. Oh, okay. And let's see, you lived there for a while and then you went to school. Uh, I was, I've moved uh, to Nebraska in, uh, when I was two years old okay. from Missouri. And then you went to school in uh, what town in Nebraska? In well, Nebraska. Napier. The town was only 175 people. Oh. Old, old County had, uh, I think, about five or 6,000. <laughs> Not too many people there. Okay, and um, county seat, uh, I think they had five or six hundred people. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, one thing you mentioned you were in Cuba for a while. How long were you there? It's about two years, I think. About two years in yeah. Cuba? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. And you have a picture of your wife. Um, you said that she had to go from there to West Virginia, I think, when you had to leave Cuba. Well, when they evacuated her out of Cuba mm -hmm. during the Cuban Missile Crisis, yeah, and they she went to Norfolk and then on then to Springfield. Okay. Now, do you have a picture of your wife here somewhere? Yeah. There, there's a picture of her there. Oh, <laughs> of that's a camel. We we went to Holy Land. Uh, oh, okay. That she, was in Israel then. Okay. Yeah. When I retired from the plywood mill, she took uh, me to Holy Land. Oh, okay. And we, we visited the Holy Land, and then we went uh, to Rome and got mm -hmm. to see the Pope. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, you're still in the, in the Navy then? Or were you out of the Navy then? Yeah, I was out of the Navy. Okay. Uh, when I uh, was in Cuba, I was in the Navy. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, when I went to Rome uh, and everything, I, uh, I was out of the Navy, uh, out permanently. Oh, okay. Good. All right. Well, just, I don't remember all of them. Oh, okay. Well, is there anything that stands out? There's, what is this, that, Masons? Uh, this uh, was, was um, Korean. Um, oh, Korean. Okay. Uh, and what year were you born? 1922. Pardon? What year did you join the military? Uh, 42. For World War II? Oh, yeah, August 42. My, I went to a boot camp in Great Lakes. From uh, Great Lakes, I went to uh, Navy Pier in Chicago to uh, aviation electronics uh, te technician school. No, I was a metalsmith. Aviation medal, Smith. And what branch of the service were you in? Navy. Navy, okay. How long were you in the Navy? Uh, 23 years. 23 years? Wow. I had broken service. I got out in 46. 46 is what I got, and uh, didn't, uh, then I went back in in 53. When, during World War II, were you in the European front or the Pacific front? Pacific. So what islands? Uh, I was on Kwajalein uh, for a while, then they sent me north to, uh, to a little island called Roy. Yeah, there's a picture of Roy someplace in, in there. It's, it's flat. <laughs> uh, 350 planes would cover the whole island with the wings folded. Wow, a little island. Yeah, the only building they had on the island was a nose hanger. The, that, uh, that, you know, the plane, uh, we, ha we didn't have anything uh, to push the planes around except humans. Oh. We had uh, 
55 gallon drums of gas and a hand pump to fill the gas, uh, planes with. We didn't have runway there because the 350 planes would f cover the whole island. The carriers would come in and drop off their uh, in, uh, planes, damaged planes, and then take the ones that he had repaired. And then we would do a work our butt off, getting those planes ready, waiting for another, another carrier to come in. Did you sleep in tents, or did you have barracks? We had a barracks, but it was out over the reef. So you were over the water? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, our, our house, you could sit uh, in one hole and fish through the other hole. <laughs> it was good fishing, too. I caught a shark one time, but I couldn't get him out through that hole. So did you ever, uh, did you, were you in combat, or were, did you stay on the island and take care of the planes? Uh, I was just on the islands. It was after the, they took it. Well, Kwajalein, we was there about three miles, uh, three days after they took it. There was still dead Japanese in the pillbox and everything. Well, that uh, bayonet, uh, I think uh, I had it in the museum for a while. Yeah, I found that in one of the pill boxes. But uh, they had uh, two cemeteries, one for the Japanese and one for Americans. See, Kwajalein is uh, small. It's about three miles long, about three-quarter mile wide. That, that's about the size of Kwajalein. And Japanese had 25,000 soldiers on it wow. when we took it. They, there's two little islands from Kwajalein, one, one on the one end and the other on the other end. One end, they had a radio station. That was all that Japanese had. The other one was their headquarters. At low tide, you could wade across from uh, Kwajalein to the, their headquarters. But uh, when uh, we took the island, they had a couple cruisers and destroyers sitting on each side of the island. And when they tried to walk across to the headquarters, they opened fire to uh, point blank, oh. just slaughtered them. We weren't allowed to go out on that one uh, uh, reef going from Kwajalein uh, to the headquarter building, uh, island, because uh, all the ammunition and stuff that was Japanese was on that coral reef there. They did not want us to be waiting across there. You were in the Navy until, you said you, you had broken service? So yes. So after World War II, what happened? After World War II, I went to work in a plywood mill. Well, well first, uh, I went on a fire lookout one summer. Uh, First summer I was out, I went out on a far lookout. And uh, after I got off the lookout, then I went to work in a plywood mill. I should have asked you, though, the two islands that you were on during World War II, was that the only places you were on, or did they move you around during World War II? World War II? I was in, uh, uh, I went to boot camp at Great Lakes. Then I went to school in Chicago. Then I went to Seattle. Then I went to a little place outside of Everett, Washington. Then I went to Point Magoo. And uh, then I went over uh, from Point Magoo, I went to San Diego. From San Diego, I went to uh, uh, Over the islands there, uh, Kwajalein and uh, Roy Namur. And uh, 
Then uh, I, I didn't uh, get uh, discharged till February 10th, uh, 46. And did you stay on the islands until 1946? Or? Well, I, I came back to, uh, from the islands, I came back uh, to um, San Francisco, and they were so full. I got there Friday evening. He told me, go in San Francisco and don't come back till Monday morning. And uh, I hadn't been paid uh, for uh, 10 months there. And uh, they paid me and I went hog wild. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was so cold. Well, when I, they, coming back from the islands, I stopped and uh, we stopped in the way, and it was so cold, uh, I was freezing. Oh, wow. it was, I think it was 75 or something like that in the <laughs> way. And when it got to San Francisco, I was really cold. So uh, I, I went to the international uh, settlement first in San Francisco, and uh, it was too expensive. So I went to Chinatown, and uh, there I stayed in this one little restaurant the rest of the time. <laughs> they put me in a, a, gave me a bunk in a, their warehouse, and I stayed there <laughs> till Monday morning. <laughs> wow. The Korean War was over? I was in a, no, the Korean War, uh, I went in, in uh, I think it was uh, February 53, and the Korean War uh, ended in uh, July or something like that. Anyway, I, just, I was in the Korean War, there was just a few months. So did you go to Korea? No, no. In the I stayed in the States. Vietnam. I, I went to <laughs> Vietnam. You did go overseas. Three times. Made three trips over there on this board ship. Whereabouts in Vietnam were you? I, I wasn't stationed there. I was board ship. Oh, okay. I made three trips over there. So you stayed on the ship the whole time? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, and tell about the time you Cuba. Pardon? Tell about, well, I was wondering about the ship. Was that a carrier? Are you, are you what kind of uh, ship were you on in Vietnam? I was on uh, three of them. Aircraft carrier. Yeah, aircraft carrier. Oh, okay. On three aircraft carriers. Ticonderoga was the last one. Hancock was the first one. Bottom Richard was the second one. They were all World War II carriers, but they were converted to, to angled deck. Originally, they were straight deck. Do you remember about how many people were on the ships when you were there? <coughs> well, there was, uh, see, the, on a board ship, you have a, what they call a ship's company. That's the people that run the ship. Then you have your squadrons. There's, there's separate commands. But I was in, in one of those squadrons. So would it be hundreds of people? Uh, uh, the ship's companies, uh, they stay on the ship all the time, and we go aboard, go over to Vietnam and come back, and then we go to the land for, and then for about six months and wait for another carrier. How many people did the carriers carry of, of unit, or of? Uh, ship's company or all together? All together. And 
how many altogether would there be? Oh, about 5,000 or something like that. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Yeah. Was the carrier ever attacked while you were no. over there? No. Uh, they came out after us one time in a little uh, torpedo boat uh -huh. and got about uh, within a half a mile of us and our planes sunk them. Oh, okay. <laughs> they didn't let them get too close. Did you ever get seasick going across <laughs> on, the, on the ship? I came close. Uh, we hit, uh, when we uh, left uh, Hawaii, a day after we left Hawaii, we got in, uh, into a typhoon, and we was in that typhoon for eight days. And I, I, I got pretty darn close to being sick. I went up on the flight deck one time, and I said, I, no more of that. It was pretty rough. It was pretty rough. We tried to, uh, Captain tried to get out of the typhoon, and it seemed like that typhoon followed us. And uh, the poor little destroyers that was at our escort, they looked more like submarines in the ships, because they were underwater more than they were on top. Wow. And when they, when he got to Japan, they, the destroyers stayed. We got two more <laughs> destroyers to go with us. Oh my gosh. But, uh, and we had uh, considerable damage and uh, they uh, did minor repairs on it and sent us on out. And uh, we had uh, two big pumps pumping uh, all the time to keep the water out of the ship. We visited Hong Kong. And uh, I've got uh, my daughter-in-law, uh, my sister-in-law, some silk, brocade silk. Uh, I, bought, I, bought, I think it was uh, four yards. I think I paid uh, something like 10 or 15 dollars for it. That was a good buy. <laughs> that, uh, well, you could uh, buy a suit and they'd make it on you for about 25 dollars. Of course, uh, you had to be careful the tailor you went to, because some of the tailors use rotten silk, uh, rotten thread, and your suit would fall off before you <laughs> lived. Not a bargain. What year was this that you were there? Well, from uh, 66 to 68. See, uh, we made, uh, like I say, we made all, all the cruises. Every time we went there, we stopped in Spain. And then uh, Philippines was our main uh, supply station. Oh, and we was on what we call the line. That's when he's going up and down the Gulf of Tonkin. We, we sail up and down the Gulf of Tonkin there for six months. This one time, our sister ship caught fire. And uh, we was about two or three hours from it. By the time we got there, there was like quite a bit of damage done. And there's a lot of people on the water there that were rescuing people. And uh, the Chinese had came out there and was picking up everything and anything they could get. Do you, do you know what caused the fire on the ship? Uh, yes. Uh, what happened, uh, they had to... Uh, getting ready to launch aircraft. This one plane was taxing 
on flight deck to get to the catapult. And uh, for some reason or other, one of his rockets fell off and bounced up and hit a gas tank of this another part that was parked. And uh, the fuel uh, tailpipe fire started the fire, and the he was going about uh, 30 miles an hour. The ship was going 30 miles an hour, and all that fuel was going down the flight deck. And the chief's quarter was uh, just below the flight deck and the fantail there. And the night crew chiefs were down there sleeping, and every one of them was killed. How do they put the fire out? Did they pump water out of the ocean on it, or what? Well, they had water there, and they had uh, other ships helping them. Oh. We, we, can, we, we escorted them to, uh, back to the Philippines, sir. And I don't know what, what they did after that. You said you made three trips to Vietnam. When you came back to the States, did you come back to the same port each time? Yes, Miramar in San Diego. And then we, we would be retrained each time. We'd take training courses and stuff. Like uh, we'd uh, go over to Arizona there for bombing practice and then uh, go to uh, Nevada there for uh, practice. And then we come back to Miramar. You said that your wife and your son had to evacuate. Yeah, uh, they were uh, they were evacuated. Gave my wife an hour pack up and get out of there and uh, get down to the dock. But and it was miles down to the dock. They sent a bus to pick it up because uh, I had the car across the bay from the main uh, station there. This is in Cuba? Yes. But uh, all, uh, all she could take was uh, that one little suitcase. And uh, it was uh, around 74, 75 degrees there. By the time they got to Norfolk, we have the snow on the ground. And the whole she had on was little shorts and a blouse. And the, there's a, a Red Cross met them just outside Norfolk and gave her a coat. Oh, thank goodness. But uh, when they uh, board the ship, the ship only uh, Maximum was uh, 1,500 people. They had 5,000 on board that ship. And they separated the men from the boy, uh, women. And any boy nine years old or older had to go with the men. My son was just nine years old. My wife had a fit. Because she didn't see him again until he got up to Norfolk. How many days did it take to get I don't know, no, yeah. but I know, see, if you knew my wife. <laughs> I wouldn't like it either. <laughs> of course, he, my son was having a ball. He had nobody watching over him. Except, Pardon? He had nobody watching over him except himself. Huh? <laughs> Just the men, <laughs> if you want them, think they were watching over him. And, and tell about you were going to arm those. Pardon? You were talking one time to me about during the Cuban Missile Crisis that you had radio-controlled little things that you were going to arm with bad stuff. Yeah. The drones, right? Is that it? The drones, yeah. Oh. yeah. What well, uh, was it about the drones that... I was, I was flying drones in uh, Cuba. 
little drones for the ships. Uh, they would, uh, when they fired, the shell would burst and uh, the, both, uh, not hit the planes, but come close. And the uh, ships that was firing, they, uh, they were supposed to uh, be monitoring, uh, tell, uh, you know, they had a certain degree miss and whatnot. And uh, this one time, this one ship uh, shot down six of our little drones. And when they got the bill for the planes, they had a fit. They had launched this one drone, and it was going, they had, it goes in a circle there for the ships to fire at it. When we launched this aircraft drone, and pretty soon it got about halfway around the circle there, and pretty soon it headed south. And nothing we could do to stop it. Because uh, it's got a radio frequency on the controls, and some radio yeah, out, uh, stronger than our frequency. And uh, they got a control of the aircraft and it went south. We never did see it again. You never found it? No. Oh. It went out of sight. <laughs> Well, the ships uh, would be out there, and they'd uh, have their guns pointed uh, towards uh, where we are going to launch it. And uh, we'd launch it and fly in a circle, and ships would fire. And um, they weren't supposed to hit the plane. The shell would burst near the plane, and uh, they had their equipment and everything to gauge uh, how close the, the shell burst was to the plane. As, as for our, as their target, uh, you know, hitting their target. And uh, this one time, uh, like I say, this radio station over Rodar, and they headed south. And, uh, when the engine stops on the aircraft, the parachute comes out and then floats down, and then we pick it up out of the water. And then uh, when we get back, uh, we have to uh, redo the engine because of salt water and everything. They evacuated all the Cuban uh, civilian workers out of there. And uh, before they evacuated this, uh, Cuban workers out, every payday to, uh, had the men out at the gate to collect the money from the workers. No. See, uh, Guantanamo City was at the end of the bay. And, uh, and the, our base, was on the one side, the main base was on one, one side of the entrance, and the uh, airfield was on the other side. And the ships would, uh, Russian ships would come through there regularly. And, uh, missile, and the missile crisis, this one, uh, uh, Russia had already installed uh, missile sites all they lacked was uh, missiles. And this one uh, ship, Russian ship, was coming in with, uh, floated with missiles. Kennedy ordered the destroyers, two destroyers, to stop them. Mm -hmm. Command to turn them back. But that was quite close. Now, is there everything we need to know about the, um, the, the military? military? Well, is the CCC, is that considered? Well, no, that's, that's 
something that's interesting. Yeah. You, you worked at the CCC. Do you, you want to tell a little bit about that? Pardon? The CCC. Can oh, three You worked at that for a while. That was after you got out of the military, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I, no, uh, I got out of high school. Oh, out of high school. Uh, oh. 19, I went in 1940. And uh, Oak Ridge was our <laughs> camp. We had a camp in Oak Ridge. Mm -hmm. And uh, we built trails and all these uh, stops, you know, uh, Pic picnic areas and everything. We built every, every one of them. Oh. Last one was above uh, Salt Creek Falls. We finished that the same time they finished the tunnel. They had uh, all the big wigs come down there for the tunnel, you know, and they had beer in the creek there, and the three seas had a flat, real good time. I was in 18, 18? and uh, after uh, uh, that fall of uh, 40, they sent us to Ketchikan, Alaska to build an air base there uh, on a net island off of uh, Ketchikan there. And uh, we was uh, on this Ward Lake, uh, it's about three or four miles out of Ketchikan, uh, for about a week. I tried to go swimming in that lake one time, never again. Because I was covered with leeches. Oh, no. <laughs> How did you get the leeches off? Pardon? How did you get the leeches off? Uh, you have to pull them off? We pull them. Oh. Uh, hoping the head comes off with them. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and then uh, after that, we went to Ned Island, and we were living in tents for about a month before we got uh, our barracks come in. Uh, they had to bring in barracks in pieces, and we had to put them together. And uh, our tents leaked like a sieve. We, well, we had to sleep wet, and um, then uh, when we got our barracks going, we moved in the barracks there, and every one of us got colds. <laughs> How much were you being paid for this? Well, five dollars a month. Uh, we got five dollars a month. Our folks got twenty-five. Oh my gosh! I never did ask my folks for the money. So twenty-five, dollars was all I got. A month. A month. But that included their food. Was the food and a place to stay. Yeah. Well, when we was in Oak Ridge, uh, all the people in Oak Ridge sent their daughters out to the relatives because they didn't trust the three C's. You could you couldn't find a girl in Oak Ridge. <laughs> In those days. <laughs> How did you get this job in the first place? Did they come to the high school and, and recruit you, or did you? How did you know about this job? Well, it, three C's was real well known. <laughs> it was for people, you know, kids that was impoverished. They did all kinds of stuff. But uh, mid west, uh, they did plant trees for uh, wind breaks and whatnot. And us, uh, we fought fires and built trails and built camps, areas, and all kinds of stuff like that. How many years were you in the CCC? Uh, little, uh, just about a year, not quite. After uh, after I got out of three seas uh, up to Alaska, I worked uh, two weeks, three weeks in a fish cannery. And uh, we was working between uh, 
14, 16 hours a day. Wow. And uh, I, that, uh, three, after three weeks, that was, <laughs> that was enough. <laughs> How much did you get paid for that job, do you remember? No, I don't, but it was, for us, uh, it was great. <laughs> I think you said when you're five, you're, you're uh, herding cattle or something? Well, I'd go out and get the old milk cows. Of course, the horse and dog knew what to do. I, I had to crawl. I didn't have a saddle or bridle because I was too small to put them on. And I had to crawl on a real fence to get on the horse. And the horse was about 20 years old or something like that, too old to, <laughs> to do anything else but walk. And we'd go out there and get the cattle, bring them in. Of course, the dog and the horse did most of the work. When you were 12, were you herding cattle for somebody else? Yes. Well, I was working on this uh, farmer ranch. We had about 500 head cattle, and uh, I all I got was my school clothes. That's all they bought. <laughs> Were you living with them? Yeah, I was living with them, and I was uh, we was milking uh, uh, this guy's uh, sister, and I milked 20 head of cows every day. Twice a day. And you yeah. were 12 years old? Yeah. Oh. And, I, and I was, uh, I was herding cattle. And like this one time, uh, our windmill broke down. And I had to herd the, those cattle to the river, which was about four or five miles. And uh, going was fine. But trying to get those cattle away was no river. I just about killed that horse, but I finally did get it. What did, else did you do for people who don't you know? What did you do? Did you make up games to play, or did, or did you just play ball? Or we didn't even have a ball. We uh, made our own toys, like uh, you know the old flat irons. Yeah. That was my car. <laughs> a heavy car. <laughs> yeah, we had to make our own toys, you might say. Like, I, I was in the, the school, uh, I told you about the school. It was a one room schoolhouse. Okay. And uh, all eight grades was in that one room schoolhouse. Four of us, four of us was in that eight grades. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I used to, uh, in my first grade, uh, I used to go down the creek and play, forget to come back. Uh, we did, and during the recess, I'd go down the creek and play, and then I'd forget to come back. And uh, they'd send a sister down there and bring me back. And uh, in the second grade, I tried, and we had a different teacher, and she had a little, little stick. She used it. Real good. <laughs> and uh, once I got spanked in school, I got one in the home. I tried to run, run away from my dad, and I'll never try that again. <laughs> he caught you. <laughs> so did you make up games with your brothers and sisters to play? Since you didn't have toys, did you make up games? or? or? Well, uh, they were, were working most of the time. You were younger? I was, uh, I was the fourth one. Okay. I had uh, two sisters and brother older than I, and I had two brothers younger. So you had a large family. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the only one left. What was school like? If it's one room, how? How does the teacher teach all eight grades well, at once? She did it. <laughs> it wasn't 
But uh, when I, uh, when we moved into town, uh, we, uh, they sent me back one grade because I was so far back behind the other kids. The one-room schoolhouse, what town was that in? Uh, we was out in the country there. Oh, and this is in Nebraska? Yeah, in Nebraska. Uh, it, to go to school, we uh, we had to wait across the creek, and even in the winter time. Wow! So you walked to school? Oh yeah, we walked to school. <laughs> How far was that to the school? Do you, was it a mile or less? I I don't know, I, but it seemed like a long ways. <laughs> well, after you got wet in the winter time, walking through the creek, I'm sure it was. Well, we took our shoes and stuff off when we waited across the creek. Oh, and then we put them back on. But it was cold, I bet. Oh, yeah, it was cold. In, in, your, in your schoolhouse, then, did, was there a, a wood stove or something to eat it? Or? Oh, we had, we had a wooden stove. The teacher had to split the wood. Uh, we, well, one of the boys split the wood for her. Then usually brought the wood in. Sometimes she did it, but uh, it, it was quite a job for her. <laughs> you probably didn't have indoor plumbing in that school either, did you? Pardon? Did you have indoor plumbing in that school? In the schoolhouse? Did you, did you probably had outhouses out behind, didn't you? We had our house. Yeah. Well, the, the little town I was in. The, they had our houses there. We didn't have electricity. I didn't see any electricity until we came to start to, to Oregon in 36. Or running water. I didn't see any running water until we left that little town for Oregon. Wow. So then you had the hand pump? Is that how you got your water? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, the, uh, our water at the house was real hard. I don't know what, he, what you think of, uh, mean by real hard. Uh, but it's, it was not, uh, soap would not work in it. So uh, the town had a well, which was, uh, I, I, I guess, about five or six blocks away from our house there. I had a wagon and uh, two cream cans, uh, 10 gallon can, and I'd go to there and get the water and bring it back. And I, we had a washing machine that looked like a half a barrel cut in half there, and we had to rock it back and forth like that. And that was my job too. So you didn't have a rigger washer, you just had a, a, a hand washer, Scrub basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the Navy had a plunger uh, over in the islands. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I, I made the plungers. <laughs> <laughs> we used, uh, had uh, what they call salt water soap. It was worthless. This is what the plunger's like. <laughs> yeah. You remember, Bob? Yeah. <laughs> you have a pail or tub or something. Except uh, I, I made holes in it through here like that. Oh, so the water would then come up through the plunger? Squish it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you. So what subjects did you study in the one room schoolhouse? Pardon? What subjects were you studying in the one-room schoolhouse? Well, all kinds of uh, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Did they teach you how to uh, write cursive and to uh, print? Or we were talking to one person that said that they never learned to print in elementary school. They went straight Pr to cursive. Printing? We never thought of printing. <laughs> Printing was for newspapers. <laughs> so you only learned cursive? Well, we had right. We, uh, Palmer penmanship. 
I don't know whether you ever heard of that or not. It, yeah, I know it's the old census, United States census. It's all in cursive writing. It, it's oh, yeah. It doesn't spread it. Mm -hmm. I remember the last two years of Hoover's uh, administration, and they blamed him for the recession and the depression, you know. What happened, there was no regulations in the banks or money institutions, and uh, this uh, a couple of the banks, uh, they made some bad loans, big loans, and they went broke, they went bankrupt. And once they went bankrupt, the domino effect came. Everybody started drawing their money out of the banks. And uh, then, then the banks didn't have any money. They, they had closed too. Some of the banks paid uh, 98 cents a dollar, some of them only uh, 15, 20 cents a dollar. Wow. And the uh, people drawing out the money, you know. Was your family affected? Yes, we lost $500, which was a, a whole lot of money. Yeah. Because, yeah. well, uh, gas was uh, 12 cents a gallon, and bread was, uh, I think it was seven or eight cents loaf, hmm. stuff like that. That $500 would have helped a lot. Well, uh, the 10 hour a day for uh, work, you work for 10 hours a day for a dollar a day. Once they lost that money, I mean, what kind of home life, I mean, was it? Well, it was, uh, uh, that dad already got, uh, Bought a service station. He, he had uh, he could run that, and uh, we always we had a big garden. If the garden was just about a block, city block. Wow. <laughs> so it, it was a big garden. Mom canned uh, day and after day. Oh, oh, we did, we didn't have any canned goods. What was in charge? And a lot of work went into preparing yeah. those. We uh, see, uh, like I say, we didn't have any electricity. Well, the only electricity we had a uh, diesel generator, and he'd uh, run it um, on Mondays, so people could wash that had washing machines. And that's the only time they ever started the thing. <laughs> so in, in the house that you grew up in, did you have a wood stove and heat? Is that Pardon? Did you have a wood stove for heat in the house that you grew up in? Or? We used coal. Oh, coal. Yeah, wood was, was quite scarce. But uh, we uh, had great big coal bins. Uh, they would hold about two tons of coal. And uh, this service station uh, we had uh, had a coal bin that was about five tons, and uh, Dad uh, had uh, two two coyotes. Uh, he caught uh, him as a pups, and uh, and uh, he bought a raccoon, and uh, for the uh, you know for people to look at the service station. And uh, every time the school bell rang, those coyotes would start howling. Yeah, we had a school bell in school for the school there. And we had a bootlegger behind the school. And then they broke up in a still. It was about 150 gallons still. He had chickens and pigs there, and then he got drunk. And all of his kids was out there watching them. <laughs> no school that day. <laughs> well, his liquor was so bad, the only ones that would drink it, it was the Indians. Oh, no. <laughs> Poor 
were Indians. <laughs> yeah, but we had an Indian reservation quite close to town, and uh, it was the Ponco Indians, part of the Sioux tribes. And uh, every year they'd have a carnival sort of thing. And this one Indian, uh, he, uh, I don't know what happened. Anyway, he got hurt. And uh, his uh, lung collapsed on him. And he, he rode a, rode a bunking horse. I guess a, a, a horn uh, in the saddle hit him. And uh, after he rode that horse, he ran a mile before he collapsed. Wow. We had another Indian, uh, he got drunk. He went home and started beating up his wife. His wife poked his eye out with a fork. <laughs> wow. Rough people. <laughs> Back to your, you said you didn't have any running water in your house? Mm hmm Do you mind if I ask how you bathed in the stuff? At the, I mean, did you have a big wash tub? tub? Oh, a wash tub. Wash tub. So you had to heat up the water and pour it into the wash tub? And yeah. And everybody took turns and used the same water probably. Yeah, we took turns. <laughs> yeah. Once a week. We didn't do it every day. Yeah. Huh. Wow. So did, for the water, I have, I've seen in some places where they actually had a hand pump inside the house. Did you have something like that? or you, you No. Had no, there are... Uh, our house uh, outside, uh, like I said, uh, had that hard water, and uh, so it would be useless to have one inside the house. And uh, on the gas station, uh, we had a air compressor in the back of the station there. To, for the air, you know, people pump up the tires. Mm -hmm. We had to start that up every time they wanted there. We had an old hand pump for the gas station. Mm -hmm. They had that glass uh, thing there that said 10 gallons on it. Uh, I don't know whether it was accurate or not. <laughs> <laughs> Well, only 12 cents a gallon, it wouldn't matter if it was no. exact or not anyway. <laughs> Pretty cheap. Yeah, the engines, uh, once a year, they'd come in town and have a little carnival, and they'd bring their dogs in and everything. See, uh, they, the Indians had uh, several dogs, uh, family dad had several dogs, because they ate dogs. And uh, we, uh, some of the kids, I didn't, because I just knew what had happened if I did. We'd steal one dog and sell them to another Indian. Well, when we was in the, on the farm, we used to have rope uh, between the house and the barn during the winter time. So you could find your way to, to the barn and back? And during the, the blizzard, blizzard, yeah. It was too bad. I saw that in a movie once, and I had never seen that before. But it actually happened with you guys. Well, it, uh, they, what they call the uh, whiteout now, we just called it a blizzard. But uh, just about uh, three or four times a year, we did that whiteout. We uh, we lose a cow or two every year. Every winter. Because of the whiteout? Uh, from winter, winter in a blizzard. And they'd fall over a bluff or something like that. When you, did you, when you slaughtered your, your cattle and stuff, 
for me, the meat? Did you have to participate in that? Well, my dad had it done. Say, my dad only had one arm. He had his arm cut off here. And that kept him out of World War I, though. <laughs> uh, he got it caught in a cord shredder. And uh, they tried to piece it back together again. And, and uh, he darn near died of blood poisoning. The doctors then are uh, a lot cr cruder than they are now. So you didn't have to participate in the slaughter of the, the animals on your well, own? He had a man come out and do it for him. And, but then he smoked. Uh, see, we didn't have a refrigerator or anything. So he had to smoke it and cure it that way. And it would last a lot longer that way then? Oh, yeah. Is it kind of like jerky, what we have now? Is that, is that what you, well, you smoke the meats? It, uh, it was a little juicy or uh, jerky. But uh, after you cook it, you know, in water, it's okay. The pigs are the same way. Well, nowadays, you know, everybody goes to the grocery store and just gets their yeah. packaged mm -hmm. meat. But back then, people had to slaughter the chickens and slaughter the pigs. Oh, yeah. There was a real process to it. Yeah. Uh, like uh, this one time, uh, we had old Tom Turkey, and he was a mean one. And uh, like uh, I was just a kid, a baby, you might say, a kid. Anyway, that uh, turkey uh, got a hold of me and started flogging me and spurring me. Ouch. And the uh, next day, we had turkey. <laughs> That's a good thing to do with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, he, that old turkey used to chase me, and I climb up on something, and, and uh, well, at first we had a gander, and he'd get a hold of me and start pump, uh, biting me on the butt, and uh, I'd climb up on something, and then that turkey would get a hold of him. <laughs> you had some ornery animals on your farm. Oh, <laughs> oh that's Farm kids, <laughs> farm animals. Did you have to gather the eggs and stuff like that from your chicken house? Pardon? Did you have to gather the eggs and things like that? Oh, your yeah. Chicken house? Oh, yeah. yeah. That was one of my chores eggs, uh, getting, gathering the eggs, cleaning the chicken house, and feeding the chickens. How many chickens do you think you had on your farm? Well, they were running wild, you might say. So I don't know how many, but we had a lot, quite a few. And the turkeys, they'd roost up in the trees. We'd have a long wire hook. We'd go along there and hook the turkeys out of the trees when we wanted turkey. Were these wild turkeys? No, they're tame turkeys. Okay, they were Did you have a regular chicken coop? No. 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 So you just had to go find the eggs. Yeah. Free range chickens are, yeah. eggs are expensive nowadays. Well, the chickens used the barn or the coop, you might say. The barn was used for just about everything. Yeah. Oh. But uh, otherwise, they'd be out in the weather all the time. Huh. They'd be running wild, you might say. Now, you also uh, worked at the Grand Canyon for a while, didn't you? Yes. Uh, you, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that? I worked there uh, one summer, and then I worked there one summer and the winter. What did you do there? Were you just taking care of the parks or something? No, I was uh, working in the kitchen. I was making salads and uh, pastry. Uh, Cutting pastry and whatnot. Oh, at one of the lodges? I worked there so I could hike. Oh. Well, that's 
a good place to hike, all right. <laughs> well, I hiked in some of the places that uh, some, even the rangers didn't know that the trail was there. Maybe it was, I don't know, they might have been a wild animal trail, I don't know, but it still went down the river. Oh. So you did hike down to the bottom? Oh, several times, yeah. Oh, uh, on the mule trail, I think I only went uh, down there on the trail about three times. But the other times uh, I go on trail, what they call the uh, un uh, improved trails. And this one trail, uh, about it was about a, I'd say about 75, 80 yards long. Uh, long uh, this one stretch of the trail that was only width to their foot. A thousand feet down one way and about uh, 1,500 feet up. Wow. And that wall was, was no holes on that wall. Wow. I went uh, down there three times before I finally got courage to go across. Mm. Once I went across that, then uh, it was okay. I've went several times across there, but uh, but I was I was really doubtful about it. The first. Yeah, so, it would be pretty scary. <laughs> oh, it was at first. The first time I crossed it, it was real scary. And uh, down, uh, I don't know how those miners got their ore and stuff back up. Uh, the canyon with a, that kind of trail, but there's the mines uh, down the bottom of the canyon there. When you hiked down to the bottom of the canyon, did you camp overnight and then go back up the next day, or did you just do that in one day? Well, most of the time I came up every day. Uh, when I went to, uh, on the uh, Mule Trail, uh, they had a place down there called Phantom Ranch. If they had cabins and uh, stuff like that, and when I went down there, I would stay overnight. But uh, other times, I would come back. Well, you were were you at the North Rim or the South Rim? South Rim. Oh, okay. I started up North Rim one time and got about halfway up until it got dark, and yeah, then I turned way. around and got back. Okay. Some of the hikers, they'd go hike in the night. They'd have flashlights and they'd hike at night, but they they always hiked in the improved trails that the, the mules and stuff went on, so they, it was safe, but uh, I didn't like that. I don't like that uh, because uh, Mules had pit stops ever so often, and boy, I tell you what, they, that smells. <laughs> you were there on the south rim, and well, it was a lot of snow and ice on the ground for about the first mile. And then this other picture on the top, that's where you got down there, and it was uh, no snow down the bottom that's of the canyon. Near. Was it after the military or before the military? Oh, after a long time after, yeah. Let's see. Well, you're probably 50 years old or so then. Oh, I was old, older than that. Older than that. I think I was, uh, I was in the 70s, I think. Oh. And you were hiking down the canyon? Yeah. Back? Wow. He's, that's why he's still hiking now. Uh, yeah. Still, yeah. still in good shape. That uh, is no, uh, see, uh, I was supposed to have somebody wa walk with me. But I couldn't ever get anybody to, that could keep up with me. So I went by myself. <laughs> what? Hmm. Where did you meet your wife? Meet my wife? Yes. Well, it's, it's Springfield. It, she was in the convent at the time. Uh, yeah. And, uh, uh, her stepmother was one of the Dina's girls of the high school, and so I knew her. And uh, I used to do some jobs for her once in a while, be 
before I ever met my wife. But she hadn't become a nun yet officially. No, she didn't take to the vows. She, she was in the convent, but she did not take the vows. Where was the convent? Was that? Mount Angel. Where is that? I'm not sure where that is. Up near Salem. Oh, okay. Yeah. I knew there was a convent out east to, or west of Eugene. Uh, I met her, a friend of mine, his name was Bob Culver, and his wife and I, uh, Bob Culver, I was his best man. Uh, they were going to go to beach, and uh, I came off that f uh, fire lookout, and I, so he invited me with, uh, to go speech with him, and uh, she was uh, in the party too. That's the first time I met her. So you worked in a fire lookout too? Yeah, over the summer. <laughs> You've done an awful lot of things in your lifetime. Oh, I, I had a lot of fun by, by myself. Hmm. What else did you do after you got out of the Army besides the working in Grand Canyon? Did you do anything else something like that that was interesting? What else? Well, I worked for plywood for a long time. After you got out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. two different plywoods. So you lived in Springfield first and then you moved to Cresswell? Yeah. Yeah, I had to my, my house in uh, Springfield there for a long time. On Mill Street. Oh, off of Mill Street, on 1st Street actually. So how many acres did you have in Cresswell? How many acres was your place? 23. 23? Wow, big mm -hmm. place. Now, west of town on Deberry Road. Yeah, Deberry Road. Yeah. I knew, knew, I knew Mrs. Deberry mm -hmm. before she died. She was a great old lady. Can I go ask you one other question about going back to when you were in school in your one room schoolhouse? How, what time of day did the school start and what time did it end? Do you remember? I think it started at 8 o'clock and ended uh, I don't know when, when it ended, about 4, I think. Okay, so about the same as it is now. Mm -hmm. And that one room schoolhouse, it only went to 8th grade? Yeah. Yeah, was, uh, students who cleaned the blackboard, and then they cleaned the swept the floor. Uh, if the teacher was busy, if uh, sometimes the teacher sweep, swept the floor and stuff like that, but most of the time the students did it. And you didn't have a playground outside or anything, did you, or, or, or did you? No, we didn't have a playground. We, we had a, a swing at home, though. So at recess, you would just kind of make up games and yeah, play tag or something? We had a uh, game uh, called Ring Around with Rosie. I don't know whether you ever heard of that or not. And a couple of other games like that. London Bridge, I suppose. <laughs> Probably some form of tag, you know, where mm -hmm. or hide and seek. And the, when the snow on the ground, that uh, we made a big circle around there and played a uh, 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 what do they call it now? We chase each other around the circle there. So you always, there was no hot lunch program, so you always had to bring a lunch, I take it. Pardon? You had to bring your own lunch from home, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We had a sandwich at home. Didn't have the school lunches, I'll give them to you. I never did have a school lunch. Not even in Springfield? Nope. You don't have, you didn't have school lunches in high school? 
You either have brought your own, or you went home. You didn't have school buses either. So when you went to Springfield schools, you were still walking to school, or did you? I had a bicycle. We had, a, we had one uh, surf, and sometimes he'd chase us, kids. We'd do, we'd do something that uh, wasn't right, so he'd chase us. <laughs> what did he chase you for? Huh? What did he chase you for? Oh, well, for different little things, like uh, we didn't uh, stop uh, when he was supposed to stop. He was an old uh, cowboy from Texas. We used to really tease him a lot. Was there only one sheriff in, in Springfield? Oh, oh yeah, just one in uh, Springfield. We only had one. We uh, kids used, used to run him crazy. <laughs> Do you remember what the population of Springfield was at the time? Yeah. 3,500, Eugene, Eugene only had 20,000. Oh, huh. So Springfield is smaller than, it was smaller then than Crestwell is now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Eugene had five uh, theaters and uh, Springfield had one. 15 cents would get you in the theater. And usually one kid would go, Get in, uh, pay to get in there, and then he opens the back door. Let the rest of you sneak yeah. in. Do you remember what the name of the theater was? Well, we had the Rex, McDonald, uh, and... Uh, oh, and Eugene, yeah. Those were in Eugene, right? Yeah. What was the one in Springfield? I don't remember now. Well, uh, when we first moved to Springfield, there were... They didn't have, uh, the state of red closed. It was later on that they, they got a theater. Now, Rex McDonald and... Uh, High League. The High League? High League, and that one on University... Uh, uh, Mayflower. Oh, Mayflower? Mayflower, yeah. Then, uh, then they got uh, after our marriage, or they got uh, outdoor theaters and stuff like that. My wife and I used to go see the outdoor theaters quite a bit. When you were in high school, going to Springfield High, did you go to Eugene a lot, or or did you kind of stay in Springfield most of the time? Was we went quite a few times in uh, Eugene, and then, but because Springfield didn't have a whole lot of uh, things to do, like uh, Skinner uh, on the Skinner's Butte there, you know, you know uh, they had that old reservoir there. I don't know whether you know that where that old reservoir is. In South Eugene. Uh, Skinner's Butte. They used to have an old r r reservoir there. And uh, us kids used to get up on uh, Skinner's Butte and then s slide our bicycle, lock our brakes on the bicycles and slide down wow. to the old uh, reservoir. It was about 50 feet or so uh, we'd slide down. Slightly dangerous, wasn't it? Yeah, it wore off some tires. <laughs> <That'd be fun. laughs> That was an early skate park. <laughs> you know how they have skateboard parks now? Well, you, you had the original. No, it was, it was, I guess it was city park. I don't know. It was just a park, that's all. Uh, down below there along the river, there, that was just a picnic area yeah. at that time. No park. It wasn't a park, it was just a picnic area. I don't know whether you saw that one picture of, uh, where the atomic bomb was dropped on Nagasaki. It was Hiroshima. 
Yeah, Hiroshima. Were you there at, afterwards? Or? Well, afterwards, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that was in, uh, in the 70s. Oh, no, 60s. You were uh, in the States when the, the last of the Korean War was going on? Yeah. yeah. My brother, uh, both my brothers was in Korea. But not, I didn't get over there. But uh, this one time uh, we came uh, from uh, oh, Vietnam to the Philippines and then uh, they got orders to go up to Korea, North Korea. That's when the Blood Bowl deal was going on. Yeah. And um, we relieved uh, Yorktown and uh, we sailed up and down North Korea there for about 12 days. Uh, was, we were supposed to uh, be uh, 25 miles offshore but I went up on the flight deck one time because it was in the winter time and it was cold. And uh, I could see traffic running up and down in North Korea. So I know <laughs> it was a lot closer. We had uh, 25 planes overhead the whole time. Were you just patrolling the area? Yeah. Because uh, they had the Pueblo in that one port there. And. Uh, we was wanting them, uh, I think, I'm quite sure the captain was wanting them to come out after us so he could go in and bomb them. But it wasn't his orders, though. His orders was supposed to be patrolling out there. I don't know what they were trying to do, <laughs> but uh, they, you know they had the men as prisoners, and uh, the ship was docked in North Korea. It's still there. Yeah, yeah. but uh, that was uh, they, the crew was still there uh, in North Korea. Uh, it, was, it was quite the uh, Close to when they captured her. Were you pretty nervous, or I mean? No, well, we weren't nervous. We had the, our planes overhead. So you felt protected. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I guess they didn't want the carrier ship blowed up, so they kept everything away from it. <laughs> they didn't let anybody get too close. Did you have other ships with you? We had uh, well. Uh, we had uh, destroyers uh, all the time when he was over in the war zones. But you were always on an aircraft car carrier. Right? Yeah, I was on an aircraft carrier. Okay. But uh, yeah, we had two destroyers every time we went into a war zone. And a lot of times uh, they'd go with us when we went over seas, but sometimes they didn't. Sometimes we picked them up in Japan. I'm going to show my ignorance, but is an aircraft carrier the largest ship that we have? At that time, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think there's battleships now weighs more than the carriers do. I don't know. But at that time, the carriers were the biggest ones. Okay. What do you think? Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. yeah.